Hi there. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. I'm so happy I found Anchor. It's letting me create and it makes things so easy to get your voice and your opinion out there. So what are you waiting for? Download Anchor today. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Faith Filled Living. And I am your host, Karen. I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you all had a very happy and Merry Christmas. Um, Today, I wanted to share, as I was reading my devotional, um, it's from In Touch, Dr. Charles Stanley. Um, Today's devotional, I wanted to share the devotional and share my thoughts. So I will begin reading and it is entitled, God is for us. The text is coming from Romans 8, 31 to 34. And I will read that now. I am reading from the CSB Christian Standard Bible. So it reads starting verse 31. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He is He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Now I will read from the devotional. Throughout life, there will be times when our sins and failures might lead us to conclude that God is disappointed or angry with us. When that happens, we need to fix our eyes on the truth of scriptures and ask the question, Paul posed, in Romans 8. If God is for us, who is against us? That's in verse 31. By delivering his own son over to death in order to save us, our Heavenly Father provides, proved his loyalty to mankind. Who will bring charges against God's elect? No accusation against us can stand Since at the moment of salvation, the Lord justified us. This means we were legally declared righteous while still in our sinful condition. No one can reverse this transition and make us guilty again. Who is the one who condemns? Although Satan rails against us, Jesus' death and resurrection are proof that we are right with God. Christ took our condemnation and gave us his righteousness in return. Now he sits at the Father's right hand, interceding for us. When doubts about the Lord's love and faithfulness arise, focus on truth. If we judge his loyalty to us by our circumstances or feelings, we will never get that accurate view of God. True security lies not in our goodness, I'm sorry, not in our good performance, but in our relationship with Christ, and no one can take that from us. Amen. So I was I was reading this. What stuck out in my head was the last sentence in this devotional. Rather, I'm sorry, the last paragraph. <clears throat> 
When doubt about the Lord's love and faithfulness arise, focus on truth. So we know that there are many thoughts, many times in our lives when we will have doubts, questions, fears, and worries, and they can drown out everything that we know is good, everything that we know is true. That's why in the scripture it talks about so much in renewing our mind, having the mind of Christ. And how do we have the mind of Christ? We have to call on him, pray to him, cry out to him, read the scriptures. That is where truth is. Stop focusing so much on the outside. Shut the noise of the outside world out. What people say and what people think and what people have done. I want to share that this is a new year coming up. And as we reflect, many people, and there's nothing wrong with making resolutions to want to, you know, eat better or exercise more or lose weight. But our number one, say, quote, New Year's resolution should be to get closer to God, to know him better, to be in the scriptures, to help people, to be kinder. It says, all throughout the Bible, we are to love God with our whole, whole heart, mind, and soul. So what does that mean for me personally? Um, I feel that yes, there are many distractions in the world. There's a balance, right? We all have responsibilities. Some people are in different stages of life. Some people have small children. Some people's children are grown. But we have work. There's so many things in the world that that could take our attentions away, especially in the times we live in now, in the news and just on TV. Just make a a choice, a decision. What do I want to focus on? Or maybe if you don't know Christ as your personal savior, say this, you know what? This is the year I want to find out the truth and ask God and he will reveal it to you, the truth. There's nothing you can do to earn it. There's nothing in the, this world that can earn your ticket to heaven. The only way we get into heaven is by confessing Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yes, we can be good people. We can give to the poor. We can help people. We can be compassionate and kind. That's what Jesus wants us to do. But scripture also says in Acts chapter for verse 12 I'm sorry I'm just gonna I'm just going to read that scripture really quickly sorry for the paper for the, the Bible rattling okay and Acts 4 chapter I mean sorry verse 12 it reads there is salvation and no one else and no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved and that says it that says it all there's one way and that's Christ Jesus And as we close out another year, my prayer is to be more consistent in my prayer and Bible reading because we just never know, right, when Christ will come back and we need to be prepared. But we also, we also need to live in this world, not be of the world, but live in the world. Yes, we do have responsibilities to do. But as I said, there's also a balance. And for me personally, I know for this year, I want to read more of the Bible. Be more like Jesus. Forgive as he forgave. Love as he loved. Not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. Anyone can talk Bible verses. Even the devil knew the Bible. So that's not enough. It's putting it into action. So 
with that, my friends, I just wanted to say God bless you. Thank you for listening. That's another goal of mine is to be more consistent on this podcast. And I will uh, wish you all a very happy, safe, and blessed new year.